Hello and welcome back to Teach Talk with the Fine Arts. I'm your host, Sarah Knoll. My guest today is Thomas Hilker. Tom's been involved with music and education pretty much all of his life. He's been teaching band choir and other music classes for five years now. He's great advice for first year teachers and also anyone that is new to the virtual space that most teachers are forced to deal with now. I really enjoyed this episode. I learned a lot. I wish I would have messaged Tom when I was a first year teacher. Anyway, I'll let him tell you all about that. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. My name is Thomas Hilliker. I am an elementary choir and band teacher in Patrick County, Virginia. What else do you need to know about me? Um, education, like why you went into music and things like that. Oh, all that fun stuff. Yes. Um, I went into music because of my high school band director. His name was Dr. Jack Scott. And it, it was just one of those, one of those kids that just needed a place to belong and I found it in band and Doc used to just encourage me at every turn and he let me do things that didn't usually let other students do just so I could have the experience and get me ready for college <clears throat> and now I can't talk so you know it's all good don't need a voice for a podcast no <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but everything everything in my life has come around to either teaching or music I spent four and a half years in the army and anytime they needed a, a volunteer to teach a class, I was there. I was had my hand up and you know, I've, I've always been working summertime band camps and stuff like that. So it's just kind of music education was just a normal route for me to go. What all grades have you taught in the past? Uh, in the past, I have taught sixth grade through 12th grade uh, when I was in Wythe County. Uh, just left there at the end of, I guess, this year. I don't, it's so confusing. It's been so long ago. Yeah. Uh, I did beginning band, sixth grade, uh, did seventh grade band, and high school band, eight through 12. And I did high school chorus, eight through 12. And uh, I did some other classes. I did some guitar classes, uh, music appreciation class. Uh, percussion ensemble class. I kind of even morphed it into a um, music technology class where we made some parody videos that are out there on YouTube somewhere. So sweet. And this year um, at Patrick County, I'll be teaching fourth grade general music and then fifth grade band and choir, sixth grade band and choir, and seventh grade band and choir. Full load. Yeah, very much so. And being virtual is. A new experience. I was band and not band. I wish I was choir and theater last year. So oh, yeah. that was interesting. I didn't yeah. really know what I was doing. And then we went virtual and that made it even worse. So <laughs> amen to that. I I did choir for three years before we went virtual and I still had no idea what I was doing. So I feel your pain there. Yeah. I I should have messaged you because I was just like, I have no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well you know where to find me at <laughs> yeah that's true i'll know next time if i ever have another choir class <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely a choir itself is a new experience but man teaching online is just still trying to wrap my head around it so like you use like google classroom yeah um i got lucky because in with county we used google classroom so that's what we used after the shutdown in the spring and uh, Patrick County uses that as well. So I was able to transfer a lot of my resources over. So that was a big help. That's good. Uh, yeah. And I've, I fell in the bandwagon. I'm sure you've seen the Facebook group of the Bitmoji for the classroom teachers. So I've, I've fallen into that trap and I've got a virtual classroom and everything. So it's been a lot of fun setting that up. <laughs> yeah. It just takes forever to get it set up. Yeah, I I bet, but man, if I end up teaching, I I may make a Bitmoji classroom. You should. It's fun. I can help you with it. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Did you ever do like virtual teaching or learning or anything before COVID, like at all? Um. No, actually, I hadn't. Uh, I'd never even done any online private lessons everything's always been face to face with me so it's just been a, a brand new challenge i know you use google classroom but did you have to do like any like zoom or skype or anything 
Um, we did a little bit in with County with Skype at the end of the year and Patrick County now is all Zoom. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing all day. So even now here I am on Zoom. <laughs> So I'm, I'm getting familiar with Zoom really quickly. It just has an easy record feature and I just have to like hit a button and edit it a little bit and that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great because, you know, we can, we're recording our lessons. That way mm -hmm. if there's class conflicts, you know, we can just post them into Google Classroom and the kids still have access to whatever they missed because they were well, in another that's class. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really great setup. Do you have any like hardware like microphones or do the students have any microphones or anything? Um, all the students in Patrick County are actually one to one. So they all have Chromebooks. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got a, a Chromebook through the school and I've got my personal laptop here. I've got some recording equipment. So I, you know, I could have looked extra fancy like you, but um, I haven't really seen the need to use it so far. Uh, yeah. The computer audio picks up everything. Um, I use uh, Filmora Wondershare for my mm -hmm. video editing. And, you know, I've just been recording stuff right off of the webcam. I've uh, been, you know, reviewing some oral warm ups with my choir kids and stuff like that. And honestly, the, the computer microphones have picked up everything just fine so far. How long have you been back, like in the classroom? Uh, <laughs> we were supposed to start on a hybrid schedule last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'd have an A group of kids and a B group of kids. Uh, a group would have been Monday, Thursday, and then Tuesday, Friday would have been the B group with Wednesday reserved for online stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, the Friday before, the school board actually met and decided to go all virtual. So they, they, they didn't really push the start date of school back. Mm -hmm. So we still technically started on Tuesday, but it was more to just, you know, get kids up to speed in Google Classroom that maybe haven't done it before, get the parents familiar with everything, get everybody into the classrooms. So last week was just kind of a, a transition phase for us. We actually didn't start our uh, online learning until today, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, West Virginia pushed school back until like September 8th, I think. Yeah, a lot of schools have done that. With County actually did that. I've, you know, I've still got friends there, of course, and mm -hmm. they've, they pushed theirs back to around Labor Day, and a lot of schools have done that. Um, one of the things that came up in our board meeting was some kind of a a uh, contractual disagreement or something, you know, why they couldn't push our start date back. So, you know, it is what it is. And we'll, we just kind of not really rush to get everything done, but mm -hmm. we had a weekend to get everything ready. Shoot. I think as of now, they're doing like Monday, Tuesday for one group. And then Wednesday is going to be like cleaning and online. And then the other group's going to be Thursday, Friday. When I left with County, it took forever to find anything, you know, just, and I just assume because, you know, everybody's afraid to leave because nobody knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It actually took me almost all summer to find this job in Patrick County. So as the worst part about it is that me and my wife, Ashley, had just bought a house last year in Withville. Oh so, man. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I, I got, a little lucky because the closest school in Patrick County to me is uh, Meadows of Dan Elementary and all I have to do is drive there and then they're giving me a county car to do the rest of my commuting whenever if ever we go back to live instruction in person so yeah it's pretty, pretty good deal I, yeah the pandemic man it's it's crazy at how you know even younger teachers you know this is only going to be technically year number five for me, but really year number six. Um, but, you know, younger teachers than me are leaving the profession, like right and left, and the older ones that are getting towards retirement, it's it's crazy. So, you know, getting certified would be great, but if you've got the background, I think you could probably find something or a provisional, you know, or something. Let's go ahead and go to post-COVID. If there ever is a post-COVID, what do you think this coming year looks like you obviously know what 
this part of this year looks like, but what about like in the future, if and when there's a vaccine and yada, yada, yada? <sighs> Me personally, I hope it gets better. You know, if they can find a vaccine, I think it'd be great. But if the past has taught us anything that not everybody's going to want to take it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, I think that's going to have an effect on it. Um, but I, I'm hoping that we can get somewhat back to normal and get back to in teaching class, uh, and, you know, just get back to the face to face with the kids. Cause you know, I'm, I'm on a whole new set of kids this year and I've only got to interact with them through a computer screen so far. Yeah. And it, you just lose a lot. I mean, I, I have a, I mean, you probably remember I have a, a pretty wild personality when I'm teaching and stuff like that. But I think it's even hard to convey that over a video. You know, if kids are just watching a video or watching a recording or watching a live session, it, it's kind of hard to pick up those subtle nuances. You know, I mean, they can see me from here up uh, unless I scoot way back. And, you know, there's a lot of body language and it's body language for them, too, as to whether or not they feel comfortable with you. So I, I really miss the the human interaction, you know, the one on one face to face stuff. So I really hope it can get back to that. Um, do I think we will? I it's hard to tell, honestly. Um, right now, it just doesn't look good. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, me and all of, all my teacher friends, you know, we're all starting virtual and. We're, we're bracing for the fact that if we go back to in-person, maybe two or three weeks we'll have with the kids to get some interaction, but then we, we feel like we're just going to be back to virtual. Yeah. You know, I think in the long run, I think there's going to be a new normal. I think virtual teaching is probably going to be here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if school districts offer that as an option for, you know, for kids or parents or whatever, uh, I think there will be some that, that take that option. So mm -hmm. I, I think from from here on out, it's it's going to be a different world, different ball game in in teaching, especially. So how do you think that's going to affect music education? Oh, it's already affected music education. Um, you know, I've I've been in meetings with the teachers I'm with now. There's uh, the, the situation I'm in now is really weird, if I can give you some background on that. Okay. Uh, I'm upper elementary. I'm fourth grade through seventh grade. Technically, I'm supposed to be the choir teacher, and there's another upper elementary teacher that's, that's the band teacher. Um, but since we're virtual, we have decided to kind of join forces and co-teach everything. So there's uh, five elementary schools. If we go back to in-person on the hybrid schedule, uh, she will be at two of the elementary schools, two of the larger ones, and I'll be at the three smaller ones. Mm -hmm. So we'll both still be doing band and choir. But if things got back to normal, normal, then we would both be going to all five schools and I would be doing all the choir stuff while she's doing band. So I, it, it's just been crazy. And the craziest thing, I think, that we're having to deal with, and I've talked with a, a few other educator friends about this, is how do you start kids that have never done an instrument before? How do you start them if they can't, you know, physically take that clarinet mouthpiece and put it in their mouth and put that flute, you know, up to their face? You know, so we're, we're trying to figure out the best approach to use with the beginners. And then, you know, we're, we're going to have to do a virtual instrument rental night if we can you know kind of focus you know what kids want to do what or what kids are capable you know because it goes back to that in-person thing you know when you're trying out kids on instruments you know everybody's got a different face everybody's got different whatever and you know everybody not everybody can do what they want to do just because it's they're physically not capable of it so yeah that's the biggest challenge you know we're gonna have to meet with these kids on a Zoom, and we're going to have to try and, you know, can we tell over a, a computer if a kid's got, you know, thin lips or thick, thicker lips or if they've got an overbite, you know, because that's, that's stuff that you can't really just come out and ask because 
if one kid says something to mom and dad and mom and dad don't why do you need to know if my kid has an overbite you yeah know, it, it, it it gets into that touchy personal personal area stuff that you know you don't want to do with you don't want to fall into that trap with parents and kids so um yeah the the biggest challenge i think that we're we're facing is getting the kids started and seeing what instrument they are capable of playing gotcha i mean uh, i'm not a flute player I, I couldn't play flute so i i get that like yeah I mean, how would I, I know if i didn't try it yeah i mean yeah we could be like okay uh do you have an empty bottle then try and blow across it and yeah. you can make a sound yeah you might have a a good shot at doing flute but if you want to play trumpet you can't really you know buzz your lips into a bottle and tell if they can play a trumpet or not yeah okay. so yeah it, it, it's just that part of it is is going to be a beast i think i think that's going to be the hardest thing for all music education because you know you know how kids are you start them on something if they're having trouble with it they're not going to want to do it mm -hmm. and you're going to lose kids because they don't think they can do it when really they just needed a different instrument in their mm -hmm. hand. So I think that's, that's going to be the number one thing that affects, um, especially, you know, beginning band. So choir, like, are you doing them like one whole zoom call or are you doing like individual parts or how are you doing that? Um, the way we're planning on doing it right now is we're, especially, you know, this fall, we don't know what's going to happen. So we're, we're planning on doing a virtual concert. So we we'll just get the kids to sing along with the metronome or recording or whatever and get them to send that to us. And then, you know, with the, you know, of course the privacy stuff, they've got to sign the, and parents have to sign the agreement to be in a virtual choir, you know, because we'll, we'll put it out on the internet for everybody to see. And, you know, you got to make sure everybody wants to be seen and all that stuff. So I think that's going to be a little easier. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the regular teaching of choir, uh, they'll be in one class. Uh, I'm actually lucky because the, the co-teacher I'm with is a, uh, is a female. So, um, and she's also a wind player. So for choir, she's going to take the female voices or the higher voices, I should say, and I'm going to take the, the lower voices. So, you know, uh, they get that, that little bit of, you know, I can go high when I need to. I have a fairly decent falsetto, but I don't like using it a lot because yeah. kids don't like hearing it. <laughs> so, you know, um, so while we're virtual, we're going to split, you know, high and low for us and then where she does wins and I'm a percussionist you know online lessons I'll have my my band class online will be full of just the percussion kids so I can focus on them and we've also set up um, a, about an hour and a half each day for each of us that kids can sign up for private lessons with either one of us regardless of what instrument they're on or what part they're singing so that's cool yeah you all have it worked out pretty well <laughs> i'm not gonna lie she's got it worked out <laughs> i just kind of fell into this and i'm just i'm riding her coattails and i'm i'm doing some tech stuff for us along the way but she's she's the mastermind behind this so <laughs> sweet let's just go back to like if you have any tips for beginning like band and choir teachers because i like i said at the beginning i was lost like <laughs> i just i didn't know what to do and i any tips you have i i'm gonna base these tips off of where they're at if you're still in school you know if you're working towards that music education degree if you've never done choir before get into your school choir mm -hmm. if not if you're so inclined, find a church, join that choir, or okay. find a community choir, you know, find some kind of choir that you can do, because I was, I never had it in my schedule when I was at college to be in choir, but luckily, one of my teachers um, hooked me up and got me a choir director spot at a church, and it, it was eye-opening, you know, and you flip it, 
if if you're not in band maybe not join band it might be a little bit more difficult to just join band in college but you know, yeah <laughs> do a little more than just take the method classes you know really dig into it see if you can you know get into some uh, some private lessons with the professors or whatever I mean, if it's just one semester you'll learn a lot more and you need to know a lot more uh, if you've already started if you've got the degree uh, I got lucky you know I'm dual certified instrumental and vocal K through adult so you know I, I can do anything which kind of puts me in a good spot you know especially landing a job like at Patrick County where I'm supposed to be doing choir I'm mm -hmm. already certified for it uh, if you're not dual certified get it I think it's a huge help if you're just starting out as a teacher and you don't have experience in one or the other like I say you know still not too late to find a group mm -hmm. uh, find some other professionals build a network build a network okay people you went to college with you know voice people instrument people whatever keep up with your old professors you know I still reach out and ask questions all the time um, find a mentor wherever you get hired at find a mentor that's in if you're instrumental find you an instrumental mentor if you're vocal find you a vocal mentor if you're doing both find both find as many as you can yeah um, and I, I think every teacher knows this going in but kids can smell fear so I've never been very comfortable with my my voice and you know especially when I'm singing uh, mm -hmm. my my keyboard ability piano ability is bare minimum of what I need so you know keep brushing up on those skills uh, find yourself 20 30 minutes of practice a day you know we always yell at our kids practice practice if there's something you're struggling with practice it and you know going back to where I said kids smell fear don't be afraid if you're gonna belt something out in front of a bunch of kids as a vocal warm-up then just belt it out if you mess it up that's fine because kids need to know that even teachers are human and we still make mistakes I you know I make fun about myself all the time I, I was I was recording a warm-up video for my kids today and my fingers got twisted and tied up and it sounded like a cat stepped on my keyboard while I'm recording this and you know I just kept singing and made a face about it it's like oh that's, that's funny and you know I, I could have easily gone back and edited that out or recorded it again so the kids didn't see that but they're gonna see that I mess up while mm -hmm. I'm one if when we go back to live uh, so you know just don't be afraid uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes don't be afraid to ask for help. If there's something you need to know about your school, find any teacher in that school and make friends. Uh, my first year teaching as like the band director at my the high school I was at, I buried myself in the band room all the time. Mm -hmm. And one of the best pieces of advice I got from another band director was get out and meet the other teachers. You know, go yeah. to lunch with the other teachers. And I, you know, I've made some great lifelong friends by doing that. And, you know, it gives you a sounding board, you know, and you get other teachers' perspectives about kids. So, you know, just d don't be afraid to, to ask anybody for help, anybody and everybody. That was yeah. a lot of advice for one question, wasn't it? No, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, last year I, I, I could use all the advice anybody could have given me given me I was just <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's scary and you know even even being an experienced teacher you know I, I put four years in and with county and I'm in a brand new brand new county brand new school system brand new type of teaching a uh, brand new age group of the kids so I, I'm basically at year one um, so you know I, I and again you know i'm not afraid to i've learned already that i'm you know but english are difficult 
I'm already asking teachers for advice about what to do. And you know, some of these teachers, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older cause I got into the profession really late, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I've always been one to mess around with the technology and stuff. So, you know, I, I was always doing stuff with Google classroom. Uh, I've, I've made websites on Google sites before, um, you know, the Bitmoji stuff, I'm just having a blast and playing around in Google Slides. I made so many slideshow presentations and then, you know, audio editing, video editing, all that tech kind of stuff mm -hmm. in the classroom in the music world. I, I love that kind of stuff. And a lot of the teachers, uh, you know, there's a, an art teacher that is more or less brand new to Patrick County. She's in her 30th year of teaching, but she's in her second year of Patrick County. And she's basically in year one because of all the technology. Yeah. So, you know, they, they've come to me for, for help with technology because I wasn't afraid to put myself out there. You know, there was uh, a couple of, there was a fine arts uh, Facebook page. There was a <clears throat> elementary band Facebook page and an elementary choir Facebook page. So one of the things I did just for fun for me to blow off stress of trying to prepare for all this online learning is I went into Google sites under my new email in Patrick County and I just did a really quick mock-up of a fine arts site and I, I sent it out to the other teachers. I was like, hey, you know, what do you, what do you think about this? I kind of ran it by my, my co-teacher, uh, Miss Stevens, first and I was like hey what do you think about this do you think people would want to use it or it'd be helpful and she was all sorts of excited and when I sent it out I got some great feedback and then they were like oh this guy knows how to do some tech stuff let's let's get him to help you know so I've, we've done some uh, just word type documents of meet your teachers so you got to put a picture on there and a little blurb about yourself and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, there was one that was having a little bit of trouble and she's like, Hey, can you help me do this? I'm like, sure I can, you know? So, you know, just always be learning is, is a, a huge piece of advice. Um, uh, whether it's tech stuff, cause you never know what you're going to face. So, uh, always be learning. Don't be afraid to, to help. I don't even remember what the question was, but this is where I ended up. So, general advice, <laughs> advice yes. for new teachers yeah so I had an issue with this and I think that's why I had so many problems you were saying like they smell fear yes and how do you go in on the first day and like establish yourself as the authority figure like how do you know like where to be like nice and where to be like authoritative I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Like, where do you need to be on the first day? I think for me, just because of my personality, uh, I, I'm a little less authoritative than, you know, the core teachers. But I think with music and arts, I think we have that freedom to be mm -hmm. a little bit more relaxed and, you know, open and easy going with the kids. Um, but, yeah, if, if you don't set the tone right out of the gate of this is how it's going to be they they will eat you up in my opinion i don't think it's possible at least for me to go in on day one and boom this is how this class is going to be because mm -hmm. you know one music is supposed to be fun and you want the kids to enjoy it so you know go back to that whole that's why i'm a little more relaxed and laid back but just like dealing with anybody else on the street, um, you know, coming into a new school like I am and brand new set of kids, I don't know what these kids have going on their home lives. Yeah. And a lot of kids need, a, you know, a father figure or a female teacher, a mother figure, you know, they need someone to look up to and someone to be able to relate to. So I always try not to come in too harsh on the first day, but I always let the kids know that it, it's there if I need it. You know, I, in my case, 
I'm lucky, you know, I, I tell them, you know, I was in the army for four and a half years. You get to choose how, how I get to be every day. I can be fun and happy go lucky, or we can go down the army road if you want to. Most of them usually pick the happy go lucky. So yeah. that's, that's a good thing. But you, you know, you just, you have to get to know the kids. Uh, you, you need to get to know what's going on in their home life because you know, if, if I'm constantly on this kid because they're falling asleep or, or whatever, that's, that's probably not going to help them because for all I know, they, they have to sleep on a floor and don't sleep very well, you know, so I, I always try and be mindful of that when I'm setting the tone for the disciplinary side of, of my teaching. So, you know, I just try and keep an open mind and just, just get to know the kids and mm-hmm. their situation. So we were talking about like, well, you were talking about like about me blurbs and pages and like slideshows. Do you recommend that for like all grade levels? Like, could I do that for high school? And they'd be like, okay. Or would they be like, oh, a slideshow? Um, wait. I had success with the slideshow stuff in in high school with the group of kids. And I, I think it's just going to boil down to, you know, what the personality of the kids. Yeah. You know, not every kid is going to like it. Not every kid thought, you know, my slides were funny. But, you know, I always tried to include something that would break the monotony of the class, especially if it was going to be a long lecture and we're just clicking through slides and here's this information, you know, and just try and present the information and the slides and put some fun stuff on it. Um, I think the level, the more fun stuff you can put on it, because, mm-hmm. you know, even high school kids, if you put this funny little, um, whatever, a little video segment on there, you're going to get the eye rolls from the kids and some of them are going to chuckle. So I, I, I'm a big fan of technology, and especially in the classroom. I think it's great. You know, a lot of these kids are, you know, especially in kids in high school now, they've grown up with a phone in their hands. Yeah. So they, they understand the technology and they, they get that aspect and it's easy for them to relate to the technology. And I, I think if you're a teacher and you're not using technology to your advantage, then you're doing the kids a disservice. I had that trouble because I wanted them to use like their Chromebooks because they have Chromebooks as well. But I also, they would misuse it. I think like they just wouldn't be listening to me on their Chromebooks and yada, yada, yada. So I, I just had trouble finding balance with everything. I think. Yeah. Uh, that's tough. You know, you, you, it's, and it's the same, whether you're using technology or, class or, or not, you're going to have the kids that aren't paying attention. Um, but, you know, and they, there are some programs out there. Uh, oh, gosh, I forget what it was called. That There was a program we used in, in Wythe County while the kids were online. You know, you could, the teacher was logged in and you had all the kids in your class and you could see everybody's screen on your screen. So you knew if somebody was off on YouTube or, you know, playing Candy Crush or whatever. I don't even know what kids play these days anymore. But mm-hmm. you know, that, that was a great program. But I think that's that's one of those things that the school district has to purchase or whatever. So, you know, if you don't have that, how do you police the, the kids? Mm-hmm. And it, it's just going to boil down to whether the kid wants to learn or not. Yeah. So, you know, just my opinion, but no matter what you do, you're not going to catch all the kids. So, you know, I, I think you got to mix it up. You know, we're, it's pounded into our heads in school as teachers, you know, teach to the kids, mix it up. Don't do the same thing the same way every single time. You're going to lose the kids interest and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, mix it up, use technology, don't use technology keep them on their toes because you know if they don't know whether or not they need their chromebook in your class or not they're going to bring it mm-hmm. and if they don't need it then you know good for them they don't have to log in but you know um yeah i think take advantage of every opportunity you can with the technology and if you have those few that 
aren't paying attention to you or off in la la land, you know, you got to deal with them. You can't just let them get away with it. But, you know, it, it kind of goes back to that whole thing of being open and understanding to the kid's home life again, too. I think mm-hmm. that, that's one of the most important things you can do as a teacher is understand the kids themselves. You know, they're not just a, a body in a seat. You know, they've got a life outside of your classroom. They've got other homework in, uh, from other classes. They've got other things. You know, I, I had like three or four different Zooms today. And by the time my fourth one, I had, I had this poor little kid who was like, yeah, this is like my sixth or seventh Zoom today. And I, I, I understand we've got to teach the kids, but, you know, having a kid on Zoom all day long, they're going to lose focus. They're going to lose attention mm-hmm. no matter what subject they're in at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's like that when you're face to face with the kids. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think there's a, a delicate balance point between technology and no technology. And unfortunately right now we're, we're stuck in technology. So I think we, we as educators just have to do our best to use technology the the best way we can to reach these kids right I had trouble with lesson planning so we weren't on block schedule so we had seven periods so like 50 ish minutes a day per class how do you split that up into where they're they're not just singing all the time or do they sing like certain days a week and do other stuff the other days a week like how do you split that up um oh gosh you would have to ask me lesson plan stuff because that was that's like my achilles heel is lesson planning but um for me what works is i would have a kind of a unit plan so you know right now we're we're looking forward looking ahead in our choir class to probably i would say veterans day is going to be our first big thing they usually want choirs or bands performing at veterans day stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know if i start today with veterans day music by the time veterans day rolls around these kids are going to be so tired of it yeah so i i think you've got to mix it up you know i i personally think if if you're in a choir class you need to sing every day at least something Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're in a band class, you need to play something every day. So uh, what I do personally is, you know, the first 10 or 15 minutes of our class, we had, uh, I'm kind of going off of what I did in Wythe County here. We had 45 minutes for choir class. So the first 10 or 15 minutes, it was, it was warmups. We're singing. Um, We had a list of warmups. I would let the kids pick, what do you want to sing today? Um, I have a uh, vowel warm up for you know a, to get those tall vowels from the kids, the A E I O U. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, we just did A was Monday, E was Tuesday, I was Wednesday, O was Thursday, U was Friday. So if, if they picked vowels and it was Thursday, instead of starting on A, we would start on and go through the vowels so we're we're not starting even the same warm-up the same every single day you mm-hmm. know it, it may be the same every every week or so but I, I think that's a lot easier for the kids to swallow and just having a choice of you know what warm-up do you do you guys feel like doing today and there there was one warm-up that the the kids absolutely hated but they loved it at the same time. It was called Oh Mrs. Shady. And it's just a goofy little song. It's a breath control exercise. So by the end of the tune, you're trying to hold out and get as many words out as you possibly can. And they absolutely hated it, but they would still pick it just just to have something different. Um, So, you know, every day, every day we were singing. Um, I started incorporating bell ringers uh, into my class which was a a phenomenal step forward for these kids because they didn't really do a whole lot of theory with the teacher that was there before me. 
Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm introducing these kids to theory. So our bell ringer, you know, I would print out a worksheet and, you know, label these pitches using your solfege, you know, or whatever. Um, I had, a, going back to what high school kids would enjoy or not, I actually printed out a set of the solfege hand signs with minions on them. The minions were giving the hand signs on oh, the little cool. Yeah, and I had seniors in high school that absolutely loved it and they would stare at the poster while they're doing their solfege stuff so you know it you may get lucky and hit a nerve on something like that but you know um, having these kids label pitches is it, you're in what key you know what's what's your time signature what's your starting pitch if this is your starting pitch where is me you know just introducing simple theory like that was just uh, it, it blew their minds at first, but, you know, that way they weren't singing the whole time. They weren't getting beat over the head with the same music over and over. And yeah. Yeah, even in choir, you know, we wouldn't do more than three or four songs and they enjoyed it. And, you know, it's, they're not constantly singing because, you know, we had three, four different parts, depending on how many kids and the, the voices and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, you, you can break it down. Okay, I need to work with the altos right now. So everybody else can just kind of chill for a minute. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I definitely see an advantage for singing every day, at least just to use the voice so you don't lose it. But I also think you need to find that balance point where you're not beating the kids over the head with the same music, you know. Um, looking forward to where I'm at right now. Yeah, we're going to look ahead to Veterans Day, but we're going to we're going to start with some basic theory and we'll do a little bit of the songs here and there. And mm -hmm. as we get closer, that, that's when you got to start beating them over the head with it cuz you know the the consistency of the the scene of the songs and making sure everybody's on their right part and all this kind of stuff, you know, it, it's it's got to be there. So I think it's a a very fine line that you've got to walk but and if if you pay half attention to any of your kids you're going to tell if they're getting bored and frustrated with whatever they're doing so if you see that boom change it up mm -hmm. yeah I had trouble with that <laughs> had a lot of trouble <laughs> yeah it, it took me a little while to to learn that like I when I was first starting in you know marching band season my first year I'm like we gotta play we gotta play we gotta play the music gotta play the music it's gotta get better it's gotta get better and you know by the time the first competition rolled around the kids were just like oh I'm so tired of this music already mm -hmm. so you know that, that was kind of my my eye opener I'm like oh my gosh I'm I'm killing these kids and they're gonna want to kill me mm -hmm. so you know I we we would take time every once in a while uh, I'd get my my library and be like, "Hey, go pull out X song from the library and let's just sight read." You know, and you know that 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 actually forced me to realize that sight reading was one of my kids' weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So, and that that realization in band actually helped me as a choir director because you know I've had some kids try out for all district choir. And sight singing is one of the things, and that's something that they they had no clue about. Yeah. So you know this this problem that popped up over in the band world for me, I was like, oh, I should probably address that in choir before it becomes a problem. So you know, I, I just being on your toes is is super important. And like I said, just find that balance of when am I wearing these kids out on this, and what do I need to do to change it up? Do you have any? Last thing I have to ask, do you have any resources that the listeners can look at or, you know, find on the interwebs and whatnot for like lessons or ideas or anything like that? If there's something you want to know about, there is more than likely a group for it on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> I've learned that I'm, I'm in a, a band director's page. I'm in a choir director's page. I'm in a Bitmoji for the Google Classroom page. 
I am in a Google Classroom for the music teacher page. So, you know, just first resource I'd say is just check Facebook, you know, check some of your friends around and say, hey, what kind of groups are you in on Facebook or what kind of resources do you have? Um, I, I, I'm going to do a little bit of a shameless plug here, but, uh, you know, I'm, if, if you're teaching band and you're teaching percussion kids, for the love of all humanity, take them to the Vic Firth website and get them working on those rudiments. Mm -hmm. The play along tracks there are, are, you know, just the, the amount of educational resources, not just for rudiments, but for mallets and, you know, in any little thing that you want to know, there's, there's tons of videos. YouTube searches are great. Uh, the only danger with that is you're going to run across some stuff that's not helpful. Yeah. And you you may realize it you may not you you may have a kid point out and like i don't know about this uh so, you know stay open to criticism and feedback uh, especially when it comes to resources uh, as of right now i'm actually publishing all my um teaching videos that i'm coming up my warm-ups and reviews and this that and the other thing i'm i'm putting them under my uh, school email for Patrick County, but I'm, I've got them unlisted right now. I'm, I may open it up in the future uh, as mm -hmm. I feel comfortable, you know, just because there's tons of resources out there. And my, my thing is like, why is anybody going to want to learn from me? But, you know, I, I may, um, I may say something that clicks with the kid and, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I think it's, it'd be valuable to have that out there. Um, Really, it, it, the, the age and the time we're living in, even though we're, you know, in worldwide pandemic or U.S. pandemic, whatever it is now, you know, the, we're in the age of technology and, you know, a simple search, a Google search, what am I trying to find out? There it is. You know, mm -hmm. everything is right there at our fingertips. And I think that's great, but I also think it's a terrible thing especially for the arts, you know, music, band, choir, art itself, you know, kids that have grown up with that phone in their hands, they're, they're so used to instant gratification. Okay, what's the square root of pi? Oh, there it is. You yeah. Know, they, they, they don't want to, they don't need to work for anything. So something like playing an instrument or, you know, training your voice to be, a, a good singer is something they don't want to do because it's hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the technology thing. I, I, the funniest story I have as a band director is I was recruiting for marching band in the spring and I asked this kid, he was a saxophone player and I needed some saxophones. And I said, Hey, you know, you should do marching band. You're doing really well. And his response to me was, well, yeah, but if I do marching band, then I won't have any time to play Fortnite. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, the struggle is real. You oh. know, poor thing. But, you know, and I know marching band's not every kid's cup of tea, but um, just the age we're in where everything is right there at a snap, the instant gratification for everything, I think you could easily find resources. And if you find something and you're not sure if it's a good resource, ask somebody, you know, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to, to reach out. Hey, you know, you've been doing choir for 13 years. I'm, I'm brand new to this. I found this resource. What do you think about it? And, you know, it may be good. It may be, get, it may be bad, but um, I, I, honestly, I think it's, it's easy to find resources anywhere nowadays. They're just a Google search away. But I think your best resources are going to be those relationships you build in college and those relationships you build in, you know, in your job, you know, because I, I had the experience of I was I was I was not that great at classroom control when I first started. So, you know, yeah. I, I would talk to some other teachers in the building. I'll be like, yo, I'm I'm about to lose my mind on these kids. What can I do? And. They're, they're, 
any anybody you can make a personal connection with is going to be your best first resource you know whether it's you know another teacher in the building a mentor teacher in your uh your specialty field whether it's the principal the assistant principal depending on how approachable they are i you know I'm, I'm super lucky now i've got three great principals and i've met two of the others for the elementary school and they're they're just all super excited and you know any questions ask me they they've hooked me up i've got my own mentor teacher uh they're a special ed teacher but then you know of course i'm hooked up with this other elementary teacher and she is an endless endless supply of resources mm -hmm. um you know find people that that compliment you find people that you know not like oh you look pretty today even though that's very important too um you know she she's got everything planned out she's been doing it in the county for uh just her fifth year but you know tech is kind of new to her mm -hmm. so you know, she she's got everything planned out i've got the tech know-how there we are yeah know? so um you know just don't be afraid to reach out and don't don't be afraid to spend time researching you know don't just go on google search and say oh there's the first first thing that's what i'm going to use yay look at me go you know uh, watch it put yourself in your kids shoes you know whether they're fourth grade or 12th grade or a college level you know, whatever it doesn't matter you know watch it from a beginner's point of view or as close to, i know it's hard to go back to being a beginner when you've gone through college and all this you know professional development and this is how you got to do everything blah, blah 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 but you know put yourself in the mindset okay i don't know anything about this and it may be something you don't know anything about you find a video find a resource read it watch it whatever you got to do and did you learn something from it if you did then that's probably a good resource that might be something that your your kids can use if you show it to the kids and they don't get it watch it again and see if you can explain it differently you know be, become the teacher there take that information and shape it in a way that you can deliver it to your kids and that it will make sense to them so yeah i, I honestly believe the resources are everywhere but go to people first mm -hmm. and if that you know don't be afraid to find something online and and ask about it say i, I don't know if this is good or not can you tell me even if you know if, if you're if you can't get a hold of another music teacher so i found this great video on teaching somebody how to sing but i've got nobody to bounce it off of well, you go find your english teacher your business teacher gym teacher whatever whoever say hey watch this video for me does it does any of it make sense to you did you learn anything from it and it just you know don't be afraid to ask anybody for any kind of help and definitely don't be afraid to bounce resources off of anybody and everybody do you have anything to add that we haven't talked about that's a good question i would add you know and i kind of touched on this in one of the earlier questions but if you're going to be a teacher whether it's virtual in person whatever you know there's information that the kids have to know but make it fun for the kids mm -hmm. it, you know, record yourself while you're teaching it, easy to do with zoom now but even if you go back to an in-person classroom record yourself and you know watch it from a student perspective did i learn anything from me or oh my gosh that was so boring what can i do to make it more fun don't be afraid to put your personality into your teaching um, I think that's one of the things that made me successful. Uh, you know, when I when I took over the the band program uh, that I I started at, I had like 17 kids, and within three years, we doubled in size. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that was largely because you know I just put myself out there. I wasn't or we got to play this scale and blah, 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 blah. So we're not going to have any fun. You know, I wanted the kids to have fun mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be fun. So you know, no matter what you're teaching, you know, whether you're teaching English 
you know, if, if you're teaching English and you've got kids learning about Romeo and Juliet or whatever, and you're reading a passage out of it, then throw in your worst Romeo accent that you possibly can just to get the kids laughing because that's going to break the tension and it's going to help refocus them. So, you know, yeah, we have to be educators and we have to be disciplinarians, but we don't have to be those people all the time. So I say, if you're going to be a new teacher or even if you're an experienced teacher and you haven't done this yet, put your personality into what you're teaching. You know, mm -hmm. it, you be amazed at the results. You know, I, I've still got kids from with County. I, I, I ran into a group of kids, two kids, not really a group, I guess, but two kids that I had taught in, in with County here. And when I was grocery shopping the other day and they, they, even in this midst of this pandemic, they ran up to me and gave me a hug. They said, Oh my gosh, we miss you so much. And it's just not going to be the same. And, you know, and I know that's, they didn't do that because I taught them how to, you know, sing Carol of the Bells during a Christmas concert, or I, I taught them. They did that because I made a connection with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't afraid to show them my personality. I'm goofy. I love to have fun. So that, that personality is going to show through in my teaching. And I think the more you do that, the more kids are going to be responsive to you, and they're going to be more open to you know, if, if there's something we have to change, um, you know, if, if you're taking over a new job, um, definitely if you're taking over a new job, don't go in guns blazing, changing everything. Okay, find out what's been working and go with that and make slow, gradual changes. Mm -hmm. If if your personality is in it and these kids know that that you're there to do what's best for them, whether you're their teacher or not, then they're going to be willing to accept those changes, you know, because I, I made some changes over the time I was there and I'm sure over my time in Patrick County, there's going to be some changes that I want to make. And I've, I've already started um, injecting my personality in, you know, we made these get to know you videos and mine was pretty goofy. Uh, I was, I hopped in on a Zoom call with the, the elementary band teacher today, and she was going to, you know, finishing up her little spiel, and she wanted me to say something about myself, and she, it, it was, it was worked out great because she had the Zoom set up to where I was automatically muted once she let me in, you know, she had a waiting room and all that stuff, so she's like, well, I'm going to let Mr. Hilliker say anything about you, and I'm, I'm kind of pointing down here and the little microphone's there with the slash through it and she's like, she's like oh you're muted let me unmute you and as soon as she unmuted me I muted myself back and I was like no and she's like well are you gonna say anything and I was just shaking my head and the kids were laughing already you know so the I think it was only like 10 kids in the class mm -hmm. but you know those those 10 kids they've already gotten a glimpse of my personality yeah. So they know, you know, if they're going to take private lessons with me or if I wind up teaching them in choir or whatever, I think those kids already know that I, I'm a fun loving teacher and I think they're going to be able to relate to me. So I, I think the number one piece of advice that I would give is don't be afraid to let your personality, your fun loving side of your personality shine through in your teaching. Do you want to promote your Facebook or YouTube or uh, Instagram or anything like that? Oh my gosh, I've got all those things. Uh, my Facebook, uh, I've got my personal page, and then I've also got my, my page of Dadpool Drums, or no, Dadpool's Diary. I had to change it because uh, I had three different pages I was managing and I wanted to put them all into one. Mm -hmm. So I just came up with this, this new name. Uh, it's my, I, I have three daughters uh, and it's my middle, middle daughter's fault that everything kind of revolves around dad pool is that, you know, I've never been a real big comic book guy, but when the comic movies started coming out, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And, you know, of course, when Deadpool came out, I just lost my mind because Ryan Reynolds was perfect for Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Nobody could have played it any better. So, you know, I, I became a big Deadpool fan. Um, I started collecting 
you know, the six inch action figures and stuff. And I started doing dumb stuff with that. Uh, and you know, my middle daughter just started calling me dad pool. And I just kind of took that and, and ran with it. So my Facebook page now kind of revolves around everything I do. Um, you know, I've got my little action figures doing dumb stuff, just stuff from everyday life, stuff from my teaching life, stuff from my uh, composing that I've done, which I haven't done in forever, but you know, I've still got some fun stuff out there. I've got uh, a link to uh, Sheet Music Plus uh, on my Facebook. Uh, YouTube channel is the same. It's Dadpool's Diary. Um, my Instagram, I think, I think my Instagram is Dadpool's Diary too. I think the only one I don't have as as that is my my Snapchat, and I just kind of use that for personal stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I think all that stuff is is linked on the the Facebook page. So probably the easiest way to find me, if you want to find me there, would be go to Facebook, look up Dadpool's Diary. I've got a little over 100 followers right now. Uh, my YouTube channel, uh, I've had some fun with that. I had a lot of fun. It's, it kind of came to a screeching halt when, you know, the, the pandemic hit and everything shut down because I was doing a lot of musical type stuff and all my instruments were at the school and they weren't allowed us in the building. And then, you know, here I am switching jobs. So I haven't, I haven't done much with my YouTube, uh, but I want to I want to get back started with that. I've got some fun ideas. I actually did a, a virus hunting video on my YouTube channel when the pandemic first hit, where I was going around the house and I was shooting my action figures, pretending they were the virus and stuff. So you know, if you want to see dumb stuff like that, you can definitely check me out. But I've got some cool ideas for some uh, music covers, uh, and I, I would probably say they're going to be unorthodox covers um not what you would be expecting but i think it'd be be fun nonetheless um and i i think being in the situation i'm in now you know as a, being an elementary teacher as opposed to being a high school teacher with a marching band and all this kind of stuff you know i'd be up at six o'clock in the morning and i wouldn't get home until 9 30 10 o'clock at night because of rehearsals and just getting everything organized and you know, now that we're virtual and I'm doing elementary and don't have that, all that extracurricular stuff, I think I've, I've got a chance to put a little more time into my, my YouTube channel. And I have a special friend that I met through YouTube and he's visited my channel and he's about due to make a return. And um, you, you'd have to check out uh, my channel to see who he is. But he, he's, he's not here. He had to leave because of the pandemic. He wasn't sure how he would be affected by that. So, but I think he's about due for a return. Awesome. I will link everything in the description and show notes. So just be like a click away. That'd be awesome. Do you want me to, do you need me to send you the links to all that stuff or? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the. Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. Those are really my three, my three big stuff that I promote my, my dumb stuff with. You see back here over my shoulder is my, my publishing company. It's called Fat Beats Music. Uh, I've been, gosh, it's been 15 years since I started writing music and trying to put it out there. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. 15 years. 2005 is when I started Fat Beats. Wow, I feel so old now, Sarah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. I love it. Yeah. You ready to stop this? I suppose so. You think you got everything you needed? I think so. Think so? Okay. And that is all for today's episode. Thank you so much to Tom for being on. I'll link Tom's profiles and everything in the description and the show notes of this episode. It was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you all so much for listening and I hope you subscribe and continue to listen to this podcast. I have been having a lot of fun with it so far and I hope you've all been enjoying it as well. Thank you again for listening and I will see you next time on Teach Talk with the Fine Arts.